Welcome back to Thought for the Day and today we're continuing in Genesis chapter 17. So let's pray. Our loving Father, now as we open your word, we pray again for the help and teaching of your Holy Spirit that you would apply these truths in your word to our hearts. And we ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. So we're going to read Genesis 17, verses 9 to 22. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring, whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah, and I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you, I will surely bless him, I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. And when he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. Well, having changed Abram's name to Abraham, God now has two further blessings for him in the remaining verses of this chapter. First, God gives Abraham an outward sign of his covenant, the sign of circumcision in verses 9 to 14, which Abraham carries out in verses 23 to 27. And for us, this is a signpost to baptism, which for the true believer is an outward sign of God's new covenant with his people through Christ. But we need to note that Abraham wasn't saved by the sign, and neither are we. Abraham was saved, was counted righteous before God by faith, chapter 15, verse 6, and so are we. We're not saved by the sign of baptism, but by the faith which it signifies. And second, God now changes his wife Sarah's name to mean princess, because princesses have kings. So not only would Sarah bear a child as an old woman, but the sacred royal dynasty would have her blood in its veins. And what was Abraham's response? Verse 17, Abraham fell face down. He worshipped almighty God. But although he began well, suddenly the impossibility of the whole scheme seems to get the better of him. And by verse 18, he asks God, well, can't we just go with Ishmael? Was Abraham disbelieving? Evidently not. And I think we can say so for two reasons. First, there's no disapproval voiced by God, as there will be after Sarah's response in a later chapter. But even more strongly, this is one of those moments where we have scripture commenting on scripture. Because the Apostle Paul, as it were, preaches a sermon on this incident in Romans 4. Let me just read a couple of verses from that chapter. Abraham did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief 
regarding the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. And so I think the challenge for us is, do you, do I have faith like that? Do I, am, are you fully convinced that God is able to do what he has promised? And you see, the blessing that God has promised to you and to me as his children is not land, it's not children. It's forgiveness of sins and eternal life with Christ. And our response should simply be, as the Apostle Paul writes, to give glory to God and to be fully convinced that he is always able to do what he has promised. Let's pray. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward. Till the race is finished and the work is done, we'll walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, we pray that through your Holy Spirit and through your grace and mercy, that that might truly be said of us. Today and through this coming week and months, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.